Since the dawn of man, meat has been on the menu. Then a pure beef hamburger. Over a pound of meat. We have the meat. And even with growing trends of vegetarian diets and plant-based substitutes, around 89% of the world population consider themselves omnivores. We have come a long way from our hunter and gatherer roots. We have managed to establish a whole industry designed to feed almost 7.7 .7 billion people. We've maximized production and we managed to reduce hunger over the past couple of decades. And although we've become exceedingly efficient at putting meat on the table, raising livestock animals by the billions comes with its own set of consequences. If animal agriculture continues to expand the way it has, there is a risk that we won't be able to stop climate change. But with rapid advances in technology, we might soon see a food industry that leaves all those problems behind. I'm about to be one of the world's first commercial customers for lab-grown meat, cultured meat. It's eat just as the company and I'm very, very excited. Here is the chicken. Looks pretty crispy outside. That's really good. I mean, look, it's really tasty. Here at 1880 in Singapore, cultured chicken is being served under a regulatory approval granted by the Singaporean government. It's the very first time a cultured meat product, meat made from animal cells grown in a lab, has been approved for commercial sale. Eat Just, the company behind these chicken nugget style dishes, is based out of San Francisco and got their start in 2011 developing plant-based egg substitutes like mung bean scrambled eggs and mayonnaise. But it wasn't until 2017 that they announced they were shifting focus to a cultured meat product. In order to feed the world that we live in um, a lot to animal protein, we need to take a third today, and it'll be more tomorrow, of our world and make it dedicated to feeding chickens and cows. We go to areas that are filled with biodiverse rainforests, taking a bulldozer to them and planting soy and corn to feed the chickens that we eat. Climate change is accelerated by the kind of animal production that we engage in. When we bring animals in tiny little spaces, that accelerates the probability that more zoonotic diseases are going to impact our families. And from a morality perspective, why do we need to cause any harm to any other living thing to have dinner that tastes good? It does not have to be that way. And those things underlie the force of this idea. The meat alternatives that have made it to the market thus far have been plant-based. Imitation beef and pork made from ingredients like pea protein and coconut oil by companies like Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods. That's a very different proposition from cultured meat, which is made from actual animal cells. I'm a huge fan of any company, of any person trying to make a product that's improving the food system, including all the plant-based proteins. Maybe in some future menu, you'll have this kind of cultivated chicken and you'll also have a plant-based version. That's fine. But I guess you have to ask yourself in our lifetime, is that diner likely to also remove the conventional option on the menu too? We do think we need a more permanent solution. We do think we sort of need, if you will, an end game to this problem. And we just think this is more likely to be the, the path to achieve that. So animal cell technology has been around for several decades for applications such as development of vaccines and other biotherapeutics. The first known prototype of cultured meat was done by Mark Post earlier in 2011. And essentially, he was developing a beef patty. It was a very expensive prototype, if I'm not mistaken, above 250,000 euros at the time to produce just one beef patty. It was more of a proof of concept to really demonstrate that this technology is possible and that it can be done. The way that we grow and produce cultured chicken is essentially we isolate chicken cells from chickens without having to kill them. So from a small biopsy, for instance, we immerse these cells in a liquid broth that contains the nutrients that the cells need to survive and be healthy and to grow. We really need these cells to multiply to reach the numbers that are sufficient to make a meat product. 
We're looking into the cells that are really important for meat. So we think about muscle cells, fat cells. By that isolation, we are able to form those muscle tissues in culture. The culture happens inside of a fermentation tank, what we call the bioreactor, which is essentially providing the same conditions as the animal body. Warm temperatures, some sort of mechanical stimulation, so that the cells are exposed to very similar conditions that they have inside of the animal. After the cells proliferate and reach a certain density, the final step is essentially to separate those cells from the liquid broth that they are in. We just make sure that the product meets our quality and safety standards, and then those cells are ready for consumption. Milk, cheese, yogurt, a lot of those derive from fermentations. The only difference is that they are starting from a different cell type. In this case, we're just using the animal cells as the initial uh, and beginning of the product. Eat Just has developed chicken nuggets so far, with far more textured chicken breasts planned for the future. But another cell-based meat startup, Memphis Meats, has already started working on culturing other animal cells as well. We've done beef, we've done duck, we've done chicken. And, and these are things that are favorites in various parts of the world. For instance, you know, people in America love beef and chicken. People in China love duck. So we wanted to show that we at Memphis Meats can produce meats that we as a global population love to eat. There's a lot of similarity on how we grow the meats from various animals or fish, but they're also different because of nutrients they need and how they actually come together to form the final product, the meat. And I think it's very similar to how we also grow various animals. There's uh, similarities in the feed that we give cows and pigs and chickens, but there's also differences how we cultivate and it's very similar for us as well. So we've been working with the FDA and the USDA for the last three years and really developing the guidelines on how this food should be regulated when we come to the market. As soon as we get regulatory approval in the United States, people will be able to go to their supermarket and buy it and enjoy it. They'll be able to go to a restaurant near them and order meat directly from animal cells. But it's not just getting the meat right. Once approved, the gates open to a very high potential demand and scaling becomes the next big hurdle. Before we can only make chicken for myself, my friends, my girlfriend, my family, my colleagues. Uh, now we actually have the ability to make chicken for millions of people. So that allows us to invest and to allow the economies of scale to drop the price. The second is we need to reduce the cost of the nutrients that these cells are consuming. So I think chicken feed raises or drops the price of chicken. The nutrients we feed ourselves does the same thing. So we need to drive that down. The cell density is another technical element. We need to continue to to increase that and hammering on those things over the course of the next five, uh, 10, 15 years will put us in a place where we're significantly below the cost of this animal protein. And that will be one of the main inflection points that will, will lead to a new way of eating meat. So here is a close up of a half eaten crispy chicken bite. You know what? What I'm really thinking is I'm just, I'm eating chicken. I like chicken. You know, the normal chickens I eat, I don't know where they came from. And so I don't know why I should be very stressed where this came from either. The meat market is worth more than $1 trillion annually, and there are over 60 startups in the cultured meat field. Cultured meat has attracted several prominent investors, including Sergey Brin, Richard Branson, and Bill Gates. What is also interesting is that even meat giants such as Cargill and Tyson have invested in the space. It's this disruptive potential of the, the market, as well as the promise to greatly reduce the climate impact of meat production that has attracted investors. It remains to be seen who will get regulatory approval in which countries and whether consumers will like lab-grown meat enough to make the switch. And while there's no evidence that lab-grown meat is any less healthy than traditional meat, there's an ongoing debate over how healthy eating meat is in general. But if these products are a success, they could be the beginning of a more humane, less destructive meat industry. The food and ag industry is the most innovative industry in the world. 
it's always figured out how to feed a growing population. And we've never failed doing so. And it's been very clear to us that we are part of that and we're going to figure out how to feed the next 3 billion people joining us. And I just see an evolution. We can do this a bit differently. We can do this in a way that is consistent with the kind of people that we want to be, the kind of planet that we all want to live in. We can build a food system that reflects really the best characteristics of who we are. And that makes me really hopeful.